Phillips. Six one four six eight two five. Ah. Oh. I'm going to ask you one more time. Where is the ammunition? Private Aaron Phillips. Six one four. Where am I? Welcome to paradise, soldier. What's your name? Phillips. Private Aaron Phillips. Well, I'm Sergeant Monroe. This handsome fella here is Lieutenant Hill. Sergeant. Lieutenant. Where are we? What is this place? Well. Best we can tell, this may be hell. Sorry for the rhyme. How'd you end up here anyway? Well, I was with the 3rd Battalion. We were doing some humping out there near Sector 6. It was an ambush, sir. Didn't know where to fire at. Wouldn't even know who was ambushing us. All I know is I woke up with my head tied to a table. You seen anyone else? No. You didn't tell him nothing, did you? No. No, sir. Just my name, rank, serial number, sirs. Well, that's good. Seriously, sir. Do you know where we are? No. But needless to say, it ain't Club Med. Who was it, Fred? Sir? That interrogated you. Was it the Jazar? Yeah. Big ugly guy. Long scar down the side of his cheek. Sorry to say, fellas. I didn't catch his name, sirs. But I gotta admit, he wasn't an attractive fellow. <laughs> yeah. That was probably the Jazar. It looks like he did quite a number on you. Yeah, it feels like that. Wish I could say I gave as good as I got, but... Well, I didn't. Well, you did what was expected of you, Private. You just stick to your training and it'd be just fine. Thank you, sir. Why did they take our boots, by the way? <laughs> That's an old tactic. It keeps you from running. They put glass all around the outside of the cell. That way, even if you find a way out, we ain't getting far. Sergeant? How long have you been here? Me? I don't know, it's been going on nine days now. Hill checked in here about six days ago. And Jazar? 
him and his goons come back every once in a while, take one of us out, rough us up a bit, you know, try to get us to talk. So there's going to be more. So where are you from, Private? Bob, sir. Bob, Missouri. Bob, Missouri? There's a place called Bob. Yes, sirs. I guess the folks that established the place weren't that creative in naming it. Nice looking family, Private. Thank you, sir. What do you got there? It's my Maggie. Pretty girl. Girlfriend? Yes, sir. Well, Sort of. She was the day before I shipped out. <laughs> she broke up with you? No, no, sir. Quite the opposite, actually. See, uh, I asked her to marry me. And, well, I guess now she's my fiance. You asked her to marry you the day you shipped out? Yes, sir. Congratulations, Private. Thank you, sir. It's been about two years now. I remember it like it was yesterday. Morning, Ma. Good morning. Oh. Ah, manners. Manners, get a glass. That rooster ears is a failure. Dad's gonna kill me. Why? What have you done? Look what time it is, Mom. Mm. Something tells me I'm not going to get this kind of cooking where I'm going. Probably not. But it'll be waiting for you when you get back home. Along with your room and your chair in the living room. You know, Ma, I was thinking, maybe I should get my own place when I get back. Oh, don't be silly. Why spend the money when you've got a perfectly good place to live right here with Mommy and Daddy? Valid point. I just don't think Dad will make me too welcome to come home. Oh, hon. Your father's just... Well, he's just your father. He doesn't want me to go. Well, of course he doesn't. He loves you. And he's scared. None of us want you to go. You understand, though, right, Ma? Why I gotta go? Not really, sweetheart. But I've always trusted you, and... You've always trusted your heart, so if this is what you feel you have to do, I have to trust that you're making the right decision. Am I, Ma? Am I making the right decision? You know, I know I got a duty to do. I, I can feel that in my heart. You know, I just... I've been doubting lately. I just don't know. Oh, I can't answer that for you, hon. You're a grown man now. You're 20 years old. But I know you've prayed about it. And you've come to your decision. And God never leads us in a wrong direction. Tell Dad that. Oh, I've tried. I think maybe you need to tell him one more time. He doesn't want to talk to me, Ma. Oh, honey, I think in his heart there's nothing more that he'd rather do. And in your heart, I think you know you need to.
You're right, Mom. Mm -hmm. What's better? Mm -hmm. Watch your head. God, give him strength. And give that angry man in the barn some patience and wisdom. Hey, Pop. Can I help? Well, not unless you know how to change out a distributor cap. Which I know you don't. Oh, you think that's a strong way to go? Look, sorry I slept so late. I didn't hear the rooster go off. Let me go take care of the straw. Already did it. Did it before the sun come up. Oh, Dad, there's got to be something I can do to help out. Well, you shouldn't worry about that now. You're not going to stick around anyway. What does it matter? Look, Dad, I'm leaving tomorrow. we got to talk about this. As far as I'm concerned, go ahead and leave today. Make no difference to me. Really, Pop? Doesn't matter to you at all. Don't you ever lay your hands on me, boy. You think I'm gonna tell you you're doing good by going down there? As far as I'm concerned, all you're doing is abandoning your family. You know I have to hire another man now, right? To help out around here. And you're leaving right as the spring planting season's coming along. Taking away an extra set of hands. Don't come down here asking what you can do to help. All you think about is yourself. Well, that went well. What happened? Well, let's just say he's not that upset about me leaving, Ma. Seriously. Why is he so upset? Is it really because I can't help but the spring planting? Is that what he said? Yeah. Oh, and that I was abandoned in the family. I was hoping that he'd finally talk to you. About what? About the real reason why he's so angry. You see, honey, when I told you he was scared, I meant it. Oh, your father would never admit to being scared about anything, but that is the truth. There's something that your father never talked to you about. What's that? He lost two brothers in Vietnam. They were his older brothers and he worshiped them. He just thought the world of them. They went and they never came back. And then he just, like everyone else on his side of the family, just never dealt with it. He bottled up all of that pain and all that hurt and just never dealt with it. It was a miracle he even talked to me about it. He lost his brothers in that war. He just doesn't want to lose you in this one. Is that what he thinks? Well, you see, this farm, this family, is all he really has. He was hoping to pass the farm down to you someday. Ma, you still can. I know, I know, but he has a different view of things. His view of war is that it took his brothers away from him, and he just doesn't want the same thing to happen to you. So he decides to hate me? That makes him feel better. He doesn't hate you. He just doesn't know how to deal with the things that 
is, are going on inside him right now. It just comes out wrong. Girls here. Maggie? Ma? Go ahead, honey. tomorrow. I don't want to talk about that right now. I just want to look at you. I just want to hold you and I want to be with you. Hey, I want to talk to you about something. Come on. time ago. Maggie, how long have we been together? What, five years? Mm -hmm. And in that time, you know, I've watched you grow to be so beautiful right before my eyes. I can't imagine being without you. I'm leaving tomorrow. And knowing that I'm going to be gone that long, I mean, it's, it's killing me. Aaron, if you're asking me if I'm going to wait for you, of course. No, no, that's not what I was getting at. I mean, that's great, but that's not what I was getting at. Aaron, why are you sweating? It's in the middle of winter. Maggie, honey, let me finish. Of course. Like I was saying, knowing that I got you here, waiting on me when I get back, well, that's enough to get me through anything. But I want to know I'm coming home to more than a girlfriend. Lude, of course I'll marry you. It took you so long to ask. Look, Maggie, I know it's not much. I didn't have a lot of money to spend. But I promise as soon as I get back, I'll get you a real one. I'll never take it off. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. <laughs> You've got to tell my folks. Sir. Okay, Mama, please let Can't me go. <laughs> What's up with this sir garbage? Come over here. You can start calling us Mom and Dad right away. I can't believe my little girl's getting married. I love you, darling. Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> Eric, congratulations. Uh, I have to sit down. That's <laughs> all <laughs> this noise about. No, woke me up. Your sister's getting married. <laughs> Sleepyhead. Aaron finally popped the question. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> You're kidding, right? Hey, I'm gonna get a real one when I get back. As soon as I get home. Yeah, sure. If you come home. Paul, why do you have to be such a jerk? Why did you go and say a thing like that? What? I'm just saying what everyone else is thinking. By the way, Phillips, if you want what the daughter's gonna look like when she gets older, just take a look at the mother. I heard that. I'm just saying. Oh, 
so, still don't believe in the war, eh, Paul? Learn to knit socks class. Call to sign up now. I think I might. Look, I just think we have too much going on here in this country. Instead of sticking our noses in other countries' business. Our noses? Yeah. I don't think you can consider it your nose. What are you talking about? I mean, if you want to consider yourself part of this country enough to call it us, I mean, don't you think you should pay attention to the decisions of the country? The decisions of the country? Or the decisions of a handful of people? Look, how can you ask me to support something that sends young soldiers just like you home in body bags every day? This isn't a war, Phillips. What is it then? A big money maker. This administration has to pay back its campaign funders somehow. So you think this is a ploy just to look good or to win some votes over? Who really knows these things? Do you know Barry Blake? Do you remember him? He was in my class a few years ahead of you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he also thought it was his civic duty to go there and fight just like you. And you know what? His friends, his family, his fiance, all never got a chance to say goodbye. He was there one day, and there was an explosion, and he wasn't there anymore. Now tell me, Phillips, what did that accomplish? Paul. And then you go and do something stupid like ask my sister to marry you. As if it wasn't bad enough she was going to lose a boyfriend, and now she's going to lose a fiance. I don't expect you to understand. I can't. Excuse me, sir? I said they can't understand. A lot of them. Anyway. They don't... They don't know what happens in our minds and in our hearts. Why we come here and... You know... Do what we do. I mean... Everybody wants their freedom. A few of us are really brave enough to fight for it. It's easy to be brave from a distance. Look, Paul, I'm going over there for your sister. For Blake. I'm even going over there for you. Don't drag me into this. This has nothing to do with me. This has everything to do with you. And everyone else here. The freedoms that we love the most. I mean, the freedom that you have just to hate me for going over there. If people didn't go over there and fight, then we wouldn't have those kind of things, Paul. Is that what they're telling you? They really have brainwashed you, haven't they? This is just not our war. By us going over there, Paul, it's keeping it from coming over here. I want to fight for those that can't. You believe whatever you want. But do you have to drag my sister into it? I'm trying to provide Maggie with a place that's safe and secure. Come on, Aaron. Jason and Erica are waiting for us. Just remember, if you do come home from the war and you hurt my sister, I'll do things to you the war didn't. Okay? I got a fun playing G.I. Joe. Fast. <laughs> Small town, my man. What's with this toy ring, Aaron? What, Erica? Jealous? Actually, yes. Well, slow down, sweetheart. We've only been dating for six months. Yeah, well, don't expect me to wait five years like she has. <laughs> but it was worth the wait. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why everyone thinks we should have got engaged sooner. Again, small town life, my man. Come on, we've got to show everyone else. <laughs> 
You know, it's just a placeholder. There are no placeholders when you get engaged. I mean, she thinks that ring is the best thing in the world. I'm getting her rolling as soon as I get back. You know, I wanted to ask you about that. You all packed up for tomorrow? Almost. I got a couple of loose ends I gotta tie up, but other than that, I'm good. Your dad? Amongst other things. Is he ever gonna get off your case about that? You know, I wish he'd even be on my case. It's just been the silent treatment. A couple good shout matches in there, you know? He'll get over it. He'll understand someday. I don't think he'll ever understand. I mean, just a little bit ago, I mean, he, he threw me down in the hay. I mean, what did I do? Well, at least know that I understand. Thanks, Jason. So, what made you finally decide to pop the question? You know, we've been together five years. I love her, she loves me. It's just time. <laughs> We were all wondering if you were ever going to do it. Speaking of, man, can I talk to you for a second? Alone? Yeah, sure. What's up? Are you all right? Yeah. What do you mean? Marty told me he saw you going down to the river. What's going on? Nothing. Just wanted to hang out down there. I know you. I know why you go down there. You went down there after your mom died. You went down there after that wreck. Actually, I limped down there every night after the wreck. Are you drinking it again? I mean, why would you ask me that? Because you're my best friend. I've been best friends since we were five years old. What's going on? You're leaving tomorrow. I'm supposed to be going with you. That stupid car accident kept me from going with you. Doesn't mean you need to start drinking again. I never stopped, Aaron. I just learned to hide it better. So you've been lying to me. You've had enough going on, Aaron. Not so much that I couldn't help. Look, I'm bummed that I couldn't sign on with you. I mean, who's going to watch your back when you're over there? I'm fine. I'll be fine. I'm more worried about you. It's nothing I can't control, all right? Yeah, that's what you said last time and you got in that stupid accident. Look, I'll make you a deal. You come home safe and sound, and I'll quit drinking, okay? You just promise me you'll keep it under control. I want you here when I get back. I promise. Will you two knock off the bromance and get over here? Yeah, we better go. Come on. gonna say you kidding me mom's been looking me to marry you for the past two years <laughs> <sighs> since we graduated and your dad I don't know he doesn't talk to me much anymore in fact he probably won't even stick around long enough for us to tell <sighs> he's gonna have to deal with this <laughs> you tell him that <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Well, you ready? As ready as it can be. Let's go. Well, there they are. What are you two kids up to? Well, Ma, Dad, we got something to tell you. Oh, what's that? Well, I asked Maggie to marry me, and Mama, she said yes. Yes! Oh my gosh, I'm so happy! That's wonderful news! Welcome to the family, dear! Thank you. Oh. Did you hear that, Dad? Me and Maggie are getting married. Isn't that great news, Larry? Mom. Go talk to 
him, dear. But no buts. You two have to put an end to this thing now. Besides, me and Maggie have wedding plans to talk about. It's okay. Come on. All right. Go. Sure, one more time. Good. So, what are you thinking? What do you, are you have? What do you have? Any ideas of what you want for the wedding? Make any headroom on it? You really think marrying that girl's the answer? What? You think it was a good idea to ask her right before you go off? I love her, Pop. That's not what I'm talking about. Well, what are you talking about? I never know what you're talking about anymore. You're getting ready to go off into God knows what. And you're going to leave that little girl here uh, hanging by a thread. She knows where I'm going, Pop. We talk about these things. What's that supposed to mean? It means exactly what I said, Pop. We actually talk about this. The war. We talk about our future. We actually talk. Unlike me and you, we don't talk about nothing. Ever. Anytime I try to talk to you, you just tune me on out. What are you talking about? You know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, you think I'm selfish? You even said it yourself. You called me selfish. You think I'm abandoning the family? I'm not abandoning the family. If anyone's selfish around here, Dad, it's you. How dare you! No, you let me finish. You never let me finish. You think I'm not scared? You think I'm not terrified of what I'm going to see, what I'm getting into over there? Pop, I didn't ask you to support this decision when I signed up. But I am asking you to at least support me. I need something from you. What I need is... Is... Is what? You! I just need you. Just lie to me and tell me it's gonna be okay. You're my father. I need my pop right now. Aaron, I... Dad, I know, I know you're not good with showing your emotions. I've known that for years. But maybe, maybe just this once, you could tell me it's gonna be okay. Maybe, maybe just this once, you could be my dad. scared. I know. I'm scared too. I watched your uncles go off to Vietnam and I never seen them come home. I lived with your grandma and your grandpa in that great big old house. It never was really a home after that. Your grandma couldn't, couldn't bear it. She started to go mad after that. Well, your grandfather, he, he wouldn't talk about it. Not even at the funeral, he, he didn't say a word. He didn't shed a tear. And you told us that if you'd signed up, it all come popping back into my mind. Aaron, I don't know if I can take that again. I, I, I know I don't want to put your mom through what I went through back then. Not with my own son. Why didn't you ever tell me about your brothers, Dad? Well, we just don't talk about stuff like that. We just bottle it up and uh, go on with our lives. This is my life, Pop. This is our lives. I mean, Mom's been great, but I need my Pop. 
Especially right now. <laughs> you know, Aaron, when your uncles died, it was like a, a little part of me died along with them. <laughs> and I don't know how big a part of me would die if you dad, think. Dad, Dad, no, no. What you think about that right now? No. Dad, you got a daughter inside. I'm getting married, Pop. I got Maggie. I got you. I got Mom. I got so much riding on this to come home to, Pop. Pop, Pop. I am coming home. Just for tonight, let's not think about any of that, okay? So just this tonight, I mean, come on, tonight. Let's just go in there and family. You got it, son. All right, now. <laughs> let's go on in there so I can give my future daughter-in-law a hug and help welcome her to our <laughs> somewhat dysfunctional family. So did they all see you off? Yeah. Ma, Pa, Jason, Erica, Maggie's folks. Even her brother showed up. And yeah, but Maggie kept it together pretty good. She sounds like an amazing girl, Private. Thanks. Yeah. You find someone like that, you hold on for dear life. Jennifer, and my kids, this is Mikey. How old are they? Mikey's nine. Liz is five. It's a nice looking family. They're the best. Got a house in Evansville, Indiana. Big house with a lake behind it. Jennifer keeps it clean. You think we were having the president over every day as clean as she kept that house.
Something told me you were the one coming in. Why should today be any different than any other day? Hey, Pastor. Good morning. I just figure as much as he's given me, the least I can do is take a few minutes out of each day to say thanks. Yeah. How are you doing for the kids? They're hanging in there, considering I'm a uh, man out tomorrow. Yeah. I was a little surprised they called the reserves up. What can we do to help? I think we have everything under control, Pastor. Maybe you could, uh, pop in and check on everyone from time to time, just until I get back. I'd be happy to. Maybe a prayer every now and then, too. Might not hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. Pastor, can... Can I ask you a question? Sure. I know it says in the Bible, Thou shall not kill. What does that mean in war? Stephen, that's a question that's been debated a long time. All I can really do is give you my opinion. That'll be a start. While the Bible clearly says, to turn the other cheek, he who was without sin, and he who lives by the sword, I guess we should also recognize that there's nothing that condemns the legitimate defense of one's household and property. In a real sense, Jesus' use of the whip with the moneylenders in the temple could be seen as an expression that sometimes violence is not only justified, but necessary. I mean, Jesus always did the best thing, overturning the tables and making the whip, right? So I guess it would stand to reason that, well, that must have been the best thing. Understand? Sort of. See, God calls us to protect ourselves but also to defend others, especially those who can't defend themselves. I guess that makes sense. Look, Stephen, everybody knows you've got a job to do over there. Whatever it may be. But just know that your family, as well as your church family, We'll be here waiting for you when you come home. You're human. Humans make mistakes. But through God's eyes, there's always grace and forgiveness. Do your duty. Serve well. Trust the Lord. And know that we'll be praying for you. Thanks, Pastor. It means a lot. Now let's pray together. Lord, we ask you to keep your watchful eye over Stephen and all those who are defending freedom. Keep them in your loving arms and bring them home safely to those that love them. We ask for your protection and your wisdom, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Pastor. Probably should probably get home. God bless you, Stephen.
best looking people I've seen all day. It's only 8 30 in the morning. No matter. Morning daddy. Morning baby. How'd you sleep champ? Fine until someone closed my door this morning. Yeah sorry about that. So what are we gonna do today? Anything special you want to do daddy? Honestly I would just love to hang at home today and hang out with you guys. Okay well your mom called she wants us to come to dinner tonight. All right, well, all I want to do is hang out with you guys until we go to Grandma's house. You sure you don't want to go out and do something? No, I just want to, you know, hang here with you guys today. Okay, well, it's your day. Whatever you want. <laughs> Speaking of what you want, want some breakfast? Mm, I'm not really hungry. Coffee's fine. So what do you guys want to do today? Whatever. I want to make you some pictures to take with you on your work trip. Honey, daddy. Hey, honey, that actually sounds like a great idea. What about you, champ? I said whatever. I don't care. Give him a minute. He'll be fine. Honey, why don't you finish up and get dressed so we can work on those pictures? Done. How about we throw a few chance? Come on, just a couple passes. You know what? I remember the first time we came out here and did this. You were four, I think. You wanted a football so bad for Christmas. Christmas morning came, you opened up the football. You were so excited. You didn't want to open up any of your other gifts. All you wanted to do was come out here and throw the ball. It was freezing outside. But you made me come out here and toss the ball with you. You remember that? No. Well, I do. It's a great day. So you going to travel for the team in the fall? I don't know. You should, Mikey. You're good. I mean, you got to bulk up a little bit, but I think you can do it. Well, maybe not quarterback. Don't. Mm. <sighs> Getting too big to... Hug your old man, huh? Why do you have to go, Dad? Yeah. I guess we haven't talked about that much these past couple of weeks. Why can't you just stay home? Because I can't, Mikey. I made a promise when I joined the reserves. I promised that if they ever needed me, I'd go. Well, they said they need me, so I gotta go. But didn't you make a promise to Mom and to us, too? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I promised that I would do everything I could to take care of you, to keep you guys safe. And, in a way, that's what I'm doing. But how can you keep us safe if you're not home? Because the fight's somewhere else, Mikey. They're... They're bad people trying to do some bad stuff. I gotta go do my part to help them. Why can't somebody else do it? They are. I mean, lots of people are. You know, it says in the Bible in Acts, it is more blessed to give than receive. And in Galatians it says, 
bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. There are a lot of people out there that need help, Mikey, and I have to do my part to help them. But can't you help people around here? I don't expect you to understand right now. You're only 10 years old. Someday, you'll see. You'll have a family of your own, and I hope that you feel if they're ever threatened, that you would do anything you can to keep them safe. But what if you don't come back? Mikey, I'll come back. In the meantime, I need you to do something for me. What? I need you to be the man of the house. I need you to look after your mom and Liz. Make sure they're safe here. You think you can do that? I'm just a kid, Dad. Back to the Bible again. It says in Isaiah, and a child will lead them. I, I think they were talking about Jesus, not a little kid named Mikey Hill. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. But you know what? You're a tough kid. You're a strong kid. And I wouldn't ask you to do this if I didn't think you could, Mikey. What exactly do I need to do? Just look after everybody. You know, help around the house. You need to make sure that you're getting up for school and help Liz get ready too. You need to go to church every Sunday. And the little things around the house that your mom needs, just do them, Mikey. Don't make her ask. I think I can do that, Dad. I know you can. And thank you. I can worry a little bit less knowing that the family's in good hands. And you know what? If you need anything, Pastor Bob at the church, he's willing to help out. Can we throw the ball a little bit more? As much as you want, champ. And Dad? Yeah? I think I will try out for the team next year. I think you handled that pretty well. Yeah. How can you really make kids understand what we do here? You can't. You just gotta say the things that you said and hope that it works out. Pray that everything works out. Well, if that's what you're into, I guess. I'm gonna make you a monkey because you love monkeys so much. I do love monkeys. Do you love cats, Daddy? I love you. Daddy, I'm not a cat. <laughs> but you're my little kitten. <laughs> so why you gotta go on a work trip, Daddy? Well, there are some people that are trying to do some bad things and I have to go try to stop them. What does that have to do with selling insurance? Nothing really. It's for Daddy's other job. The one where you wear the hunting outfit? Yeah, honey, the camouflage. Are these bad people going to try to hurt you? Honey, that isn't anything I want you to worry about. What is it, Liz? Madison Willis at school told me that you are going to fight in the war. Is that true, Daddy? Is it true? Yeah, honey. It's not a work trip like you said. No, it's not a work trip. I, I just didn't want you to get scared about where I was going. you to go. I want you to stay. I know, Princess. I, I know. So will you stay home and not go? No, honey. I have to go. But what if you don't come home? What if something happens? Honey, I'm going to come home. Tommy Miller's older brother went to the war and he got killed, Daddy. And, you know, I'm real sad for Tommy Miller and his parents, but it's just not going to happen to me. I'm going to be fine. But why do you have to go? Because I can help. 
Remember that Jesus wants us to help others? This is how I can help. There are a lot of people that need help, honey. And that's what Jesus wants you to do? Help them? Yeah. Jesus wants all of us to help others. Not just me. It, we can all help in different ways. Can I help? Absolutely. The best way you can help people right now is to pray for them. What about you? Can I pray for you too? You can always pray for me, Liz. In fact, I'll make you a deal. Every night, before you go to bed, after you're done saying your prayers, I want you to look up and I want you to tell me all about your day. And I promise that I'll look up and tell you all about my day. That way, it'll be like we're talking to each other. But you'll be so far away. Yeah, but it'll be like I have you right here too, because I will. Honey, even though I'm so far away, you, Mikey, and your mom will always be in my thoughts and in my heart and in my prayers. And I will always be in your heart and your mind and you can always keep me in your prayers. I'm gonna, Daddy. Thank you. Daddy, can I ask you something else? Anything, Princess. Is Jesus gonna make sure that you come home? Honey, I can't promise you that. But what I can tell you is that God is always watching over us. He never leaves our side. Well, if that's true, wouldn't he protect you? I mean, if he's right by you, he should be able to protect you. You know what I believe? I believe that God has this huge book. And in this book is everyone's lives. He knows what's going to happen even before we do. Hmm? You see... God knew that I was going to have to go over and fight even before I did. He knows what's going to happen to you, to Mom, to Mikey, even f before we do. It's all part of His plan. So if I pray, will He tell me what's going to happen? Well, Liz, that's not really how it works. See, we pray to God because we want to show Him that we believe in Him. And in believing in Him that we trust Him. We have to trust that no matter what happens, it's all part of His plan. Do you think it's part of God's plan that I marry Tommy Miller because he says that's going to happen? <laughs> that's something that you don't have to worry about for a long time. And I am not going to worry about that for a long time. How are they coming? She has been beat by a mile. She's quite the artist. See, you, Mommy? Wow, that's beautiful. Daddy can't even stand alive. Hey! Hey, small horses. By the way, your mom called. She said she's having some small problem with her oven. I better get over there. No, she insisted that you stay here. She's going to have a neighbor look at it in a little bit. Mm. That's rude. She says it's your last day at home, so she doesn't want you worrying about something as silly as her stuff. Well, gives me more time for coloring lessons anyway. Yeah. I also told her that we're going to bring dinner here instead, so she's bringing whatever she was going to make. Just pretend to like it. I always do. <laughs> you like Grandma's cooking, don't you? Not really, but that's okay. I won't tell her. I never would have guessed.
there she is. <laughs> How's my Princess Elizabeth? Good. Do you want to see the pictures that me and Daddy made today? I sure do. Uh, but in a few minutes. Where's your brother? Hi, Grandma. Well, are you too old for hugs? I know, I know. I smell like an old lady. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Here, Stephen, let me take that. No. No, no, no. Just because it's your house doesn't mean it's not my dinner. Mom, what's going on with your stove? Well, nothing I'm sure your father couldn't have fixed. It's none of your business. I'll get someone to look at it tomorrow. You don't have to worry about it. Mom, you really don't have to make dinner tonight, okay? Why don't we just go out? Yeah. Absolutely not. This is going to be your last homemade meal. And I know how much you love my homemade pasta sauce. And besides, last night I did most of the cooking, so all I have to do is boil up some noodles and heat up the pasta sauce. Oh, Jennifer, dear? Yes. Will you take the garlic bread and put it in? Sure, Mom. And try to keep an eye on it. Try not to burn it this time. I have to go wash my hands. You're going to leave me alone with her? Just till I get back. Don't burn the garlic bread. You'll be fine. hardly ate anything at all. Nothing but the garlic bread. That's okay. They've had a big lunch. Go ahead. You haven't had much yourself, Jen. You have a big lunch too? Yeah, and I'm trying to cut down on portions. Yeah, but she did a fabulous job. Wait, Jen. I have something I want to talk to you both about. Well, what is it? Is everything all right? It's okay. Everything's fine. What is this? Open it. Mom, what's this all about? It's your father's military pension. We can't accept this, Carol. Oh, you can and you will. I want you to start a college fund for both Liz and Maggie. Mom, this is your money. Not anymore, it's not. This is a lot of money. Well, I gave 10% of it at the church as a tithe, and I'm giving you the rest. Why? I don't need it anymore. Your father and I put back money all our lives until he passed. I have enough money for the rest of my life. You two need it more than I do. Now, Stephen, you're going over there and, and you're leaving tomorrow and only the Lord knows what, what could happen to this family. And if, and I, and I mean if, something should happen, I want to make sure that the kids have their educations paid. They get a chance to go to college. I ask God to tell me what to do to help you. And he told me to give you this. Carol, I'm not taking this back. <laughs> this is for those kids. Stephen, when you get back, you can add your own pension to this, and there'll be enough for their education. <sighs> now, Jen, you know things are going to get tough. I have to tell you, they're going to get really tough. For all the intents and purposes, you're going to be a single mother, and you are going to have to be willing to learn to accept help from people around you. 
This is an amazing family. And there are a lot of people ready to help you. I promise, Mom. Good, you can't do everything yourself and, and you don't need to. Now, Stephen, you have one job and one job only. And that is to come back to this beautiful, amazing wife and those two great kids. Your father called me a few days before he died. He told me a story about one night when he was in a bunker and he could hear the shells going off in the distance and he closed his eyes and he imagined that it was a spring thunderstorm like we have around here. And he said, for a little more than a minute, he felt like he was home. You need to hold those things when you go there. You need to find a place in your heart you can escape to when you need to. You need to remember to pray, especially when you're in a God-forsaken place, worse than you ever could think of. Remember to pray. You are never alone. There's someone walking alongside you. God. Always remember that, Stephen. Mommy! I'm coming, honey. Thanks for everything, Mom. <laughs> You're Not just the money. You're welcome, honey. Just remember, if you need anything, just call. Mom. I have one more thing to give you. You don't need to give me anything else, okay? It was your father's. It was given to him by his father who had it in World War II. And your great-grandpa had it in World War I. It's a Bible. <laughs> Yes, soldiers used to carry this little Bibles into combat. They used to read it in their bunks, just past the time, and sometimes to get the answers. Stephen, you're going to be looking for answers when you're there. You're going to find them right there. What's this inscription? The greatest hope for safety? is in the loving arms of God. <laughs> your great-grandfather wrote that for your grandfather. Always remember that, Stephen. I will, Mom. I promise. You really believe that stuff? Stuff? That God stuff? That stuff about being protected? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Me too. I don't know. I can't imagine that a loving and protective God would put somebody like you in a place like this. What are you thinking about? I was just thinking about everything this little Bible has been through. I mean, this will be the fourth war for it. Mom scare you tonight? I don't know. I guess a little. But I get what she's saying. I don't think she was trying to scare you. Like. I know. I know. But she made some great points. It's like she was right inside my mind. Well... She went through this with my dad, so... 
promise me this isn't going to end up the same way. Honey, you know I can't make that promise. I don't know what's going to happen over there. What I can promise you is I'm going to do everything I can, everything within my power, to come home safe and sound to this family. But if something happens... I don't even want to think about that, Stephen. Honey, I know you don't want to talk about this, but we have to. I mean, we got to have a plan for you and the kids. Look, we've been really blessed over the years. God's really taken care of us. I mean, the house is paid off and the cars. Between my savings and the pension, and the money mom gave us for the kids' college, because we're gonna be fine. We will not be fine, Stephen. That's that's not what I meant. Look, I know we talked about this when you signed on with the reserves a little, but now it's happening and I'm terrified. I'm terrified that you will not come home. I am terrified that the kids will have to grow up without a dad. And I'm terrified that all of our plans for our future will be gone. Honey, honey, honey. None of that is going to happen. We've dreamt together. We've built a life together. I, I promise you, I'm going to do everything in my power to come home and live those dreams. I don't want to lose you, Stephen. And you won't. I'll be right there in your heart. Pray with me, Jennifer. Dear Lord, give my family the strength to endure me leaving for this deployment. Please watch over them, make sure they're safe. Lord, please give me the strength to endure whatever things I might face. Please watch over me and bring me home safe to this family. Amen. Just tell us what we want to know. Sergeant Brian Monroe, United States Marine Corps, 846 5721. Wrong answer, Sergeant. You ain't getting nothing out of me. The boy then. Alone. Then tell me what I want to know. Sergeant Brian Monroe, United States Marine Corps, 846 5721.
You all right? He woke up for a minute. He passed right back out. How about you? Yeah, I'm fine. He reminds me of my boy. Sir? Phillips. He reminds me of my boy. You got a kid, sir? Yeah, I got a little young. I didn't know you were married. I didn't say I was. His mother and I split up years ago. Get to spend any time with him? No, not at all. Staring down decisions that I've made I guess you could say they haven't been too great And I wouldn't blame you if you didn't want my name anymore You may find
Hey, Dad. I still don't understand why you wanted to be buried here instead of Arlington. It's okay, I guess. Shipping out again tomorrow. It's my fifth tour. Look, I'm sorry I haven't been by to see you in a while. A lot of things have been going on this past few years. Chelsea and I split up. Can't say I blame her, though. I've put her and Lewis through a lot. A lot. She got remarried about a year ago. Seems like a good guy, I guess. I sure do miss her, though, Dad. Listen, I gotta go. I got some things to do. I'll come back and see you when I get home. See you, Dad. doing here, Brian? You can't just show up like this, you know that. Hey, Chels. You look good. What do you want, Brian? I'm shipping out tomorrow and I'd like to see Lewis for a few minutes. Shipping out again? Doesn't surprise me. Look, Brian, you made your choices. You decided that that uniform is more important to you than we are. And I'm not gonna let him get in the middle of this again. He's doing just fine. We're doing just fine. Honey, this is the last time. I, I just want to say goodbye. Stop calling me that. Yeah, I'm sure it's the last time, Brian. I've heard that before. Lewis has heard that before. I've told you a hundred times that I am sorry. I'm sorry for hurting you. I'm sorry for hurting Lewis. I, I'm sorry that I... don't want to I... hear it anymore, Brian. Please, Chelsea. Just a few minutes. That's what you want. It's always about what you want, isn't it, Brian? What about what I want? What about what he wants? He wanted a father that was going to be home for him. And I wanted a husband that... And he didn't have to stay up at night and wonder whether or not he was alive. A husband that I got to talk to more than once a month. Someone that wasn't gone for months, even years at a time. That's what I wanted, Brian. Please, Chelsea. Just a few minutes. I've wasted too many tears on you already. You can have a couple of minutes, but then I want you out of here. I don't want him any more confused than he already is. Your dad's here. Mom! Just let him say whatever he has to say, and then he'll leave. Hey, Louie. I'll go by Louis now, Dad. Oh, sorry. So, 
I guess your mom mentioned that I'm shipping out again tomorrow. Look, I meant to call you on Christmas, but you know how it is. Time got away from me, and I just... I... Don't worry about it, Dad. So how's Mark? It's fine, I guess. Is he taking good care of you and your mom? Yeah, Dad. He's fine. So, where are you going this time? I don't know yet. I'll find out more when I get to South Carolina. I'm sure it's not going to be paradise, but it's going to be a lot warmer than this place. I gotta go in, Dad. I have a lot of homework. Right, okay. Um, gotta keep up on the studies. I understand. It was good to see you. Louis, Louis, listen, I know things between us haven't been the greatest, but I wanted to say... Say what, Dad? Well, I wanted to tell you that... I know, Dad. No. No, Lewis, you don't know. See, I haven't done a very good job of, of showing you or, or, or telling you that, well, I love you. Dad, I... No, listen, when we were growing up, we hardly ever said, I love you. I mean, my dad, your grandpa, he never said it. But he never had to, because we always knew it. But you don't know it, because I haven't been there for you. And I haven't done a good job of of showing you. But, Louis, I, I do. I love you. I know, Dad. I've always... Hey, Sarge. Gary? Usual? Yeah. Gotcha. You know, haven't seen Chelsea in a while. How's everything going? Don't ask. Ah, okay. There you go, Sarge. Thanks, Gary. Is that a nickname? Excuse me? Sarge. Is that a nickname? No. I'm a Sergeant Marine Corps. Well, how do you do? What outfit you with? First Marine Division. Ooh. Seen any action? Yeah, more than I want to remember. I hear you. I did my stretch in Vietnam. Yeah, I'm a Marine too. Yeah. Yeah, at least I was. So they told me I had to retire. You retired? No. I'm actually shipping out tomorrow for another tour. Yeah, you gotta love the life, huh? Do what? The life, being a Marine. Yeah. 
I loved it. All I ever wanted to do was tell everyone, everywhere I went, I'm a United States Marine. Put the fear of God in a lot of people. You from around here? Yeah, a few blocks down Oak Ridge. No kidding. My ex-wife lived on Oak Ridge. <laughs> yeah, until she got remarried, moved to Boston or Baltimore or Bermuda or somewhere. I can't keep up with where they went. Got any kids? Yeah, daughter. She went with them when they moved. Man, she must be in her 40s by now. Where she live? No idea. Didn't see her much after they moved. In fact, didn't see her at all after they moved. Yeah, it's too bad. Ah, no big deal. You ask me, everything went fine. I love being in the Corps. And I wouldn't change a thing. Nothing at all? Not one thing. I mean, look at me. I'm as happy as I've ever been. Living off the government's dime. What, what, what could be better? Ready for another one, Sarge? Give him one on me. Or I guess I should say on Uncle Sam. <laughs> Semper Fi. Semper Fi. And then I got on the plane and I headed out the next day. You heard anything from him? Your son? No. I don't even think he knows where I am. I sent Chelsea an email a couple weeks after I got into the country, but she didn't respond. Surely she told him where you were. I wouldn't bet on it. May I speak frankly? See, sir, whatever happened with you and your son, God can fix it. You just have to believe in him and then ask. He'll... I can't even get my boy to talk to me, much less tell him that... Well, you know. I know. But I also know that if something were to happen to me here, that my wife and kids would never question whether or not that I loved them. And you're saying that my boy would? I'm not saying anything of that sort, sir. All I'm saying is my faith has kept me strong. It's made me a better soldier better husband, better father. Can I ask you something, sir? Yeah. I am proud of what my faith has made me. Can you say you are proud of you know, what your lack of faith has made you? I'm not sure what you mean. Let me, let me put it this way. What do you have to lose by believing? Is it so hard to believe that there's always someone that loves us unconditionally? I mean, that's such a bad thing. You know, Hill, I guess I can say that with everything that I've seen in my life, I find it hard to believe that there is a God that loves us so much, but yet 
lets things like this happen, like this war, like the war before that, and all the other wars before that. Sir, God doesn't make these wars happen. People do. We do. See, God gives us the free will to do as we like. Everything that God makes starts out perfect. Sometimes, sometimes people do things to, to lead us off that, to lead us away. God doesn't make these wars happen. We make these wars happen. Sir, you just didn't answer my question. What do you have to lose by believing? I, I don't know how to answer that, Hill. I mean, all of my life, I relied on myself. That is all I've ever known. I understand that, sir, but tell me, how has that worked out for you so far? Not so well, I guess. Sir, there... There are a lot of people that, that laugh at faith. But I guarantee you that every one of those people, sometime, has found themselves searching, searching for something. What? Something Something to believe in? Something that makes sense of everything. And faith does that? Sometimes. Sometimes not. But faith always gives us an outlet to ask. Believing in God makes us know that there's always someone listening. God? God. So let me ask again. What do you have to lose by believing? I guess when you have nothing, you have nothing to lose. So maybe it's time that I... Soldier, just relax. Where's the lieutenant? And they just took him out. I didn't tell him nothing, sir. I swear. I know you didn't, Private. Just relax. <sighs> How long was that? I don't know. Probably an hour. Not that long. Yeah. But not as long as I have. What are you talking about, sir? Private, can I ask you a question? Of course, sir. Are you a believer? A believer, sir? Yeah, a Christian. Oh, yes, sir. Mom, Pop. You know, they made sure that I was going to Sunday school and church every week. I was saved when I was nine. I haven't believed in anything for a long time. I mean, now's a good time to start, sir. I mean, if you want to go to heaven. But, Private, I've done five tours of duty. I've done everything in my power to keep my troops and my family safe. 
Isn't that enough to get me into heaven? I don't know, sir. Not really. What do you think heaven's like? Sir? Heaven. What do you think it's like? I don't know, sir. I have like no place I've ever seen. I no pain. I no suffering. No sadness. Tell you right now, sir. Anywhere's better than here. Yeah. You're right, Private. Sir? Sir, you're alright. No, I'm not alright. I'm as far from alright as I can be. I already told you. You're not gonna get anything out of me. We'll see about that. I've been trying to do everything myself. My whole life. I've made a mess of my life. I've let so many people down. Tell me where they are. Just point to the map. Just do it, and all of this can stop. Lieutenant Stephen Hill, United States. God, if you're listening, I'm sorry for everything I've done in my life. I'm sorry for the mess that I've made. <laughs> I'm sorry for everything that I've done. Please forgive me. All you have to do is point. Just point a finger on the map. You don't have to say a word. Just point. Then you can have something to eat, some clean clothes, a shower. Lieutenant Stephen, help. Unites. Help me, God. Help me for the things that I've done wrong in my life. I believe in you. I know you can help me. Please. I need you in my life. Please give me the strength. You think your God can save you? No one can save you except you. Just point your finger and you'll be saved. I'm ready to be saved, God. I'm ready to accept Jesus. Please come into my heart. Please. There's only one that can save me, Jesus Christ. I will make this very clear. You are the only one that can save you right now. Just tell us what we want to know. Lord, give me the strength. Lieutenant Stephen Hill. You know oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I can feel you. I can... Sometimes, things don't end the way we expect them to. Why me and Private Phillips were able to get out of there, and Lieutenant Hill didn't? Well, that's something that I'll never be able to understand. But I've realized that we can never fully understand what God's plan is for us. We just have to take the life that's given to us and make the most of it. But what I have come to understand in life it's not always about the things we're trying to achieve or accomplish. It's not about the stuff that we want in life. It's 
Sometimes, it's about the things we leave behind. Yeah. 